So today I'm going to paint over this sketch that I already prepared and I'm going to paint with gouache. I'm going to mostly use these two brushes. Um, they're quite stiff, but I really like them for gouache. Um, I'm going to start with a um, underpaint um, and for that I will use this soft bristle brush and I think I'm going to use uh, watercolor for the underpaint because watercolor is transparent and with gouache what I find difficult is that uh, after you lay the first layer your sketch is not visible anymore or not as visible and I really struggle with that. I will, um, this is the reference that I'm using. Um, this is actually a bag that I bought myself uh, recently. And um, I really like um, the form of the bag and I struggle with uh, painting folds. Especially fabric folds are very difficult, but the leather folds are um, not as, uh, I guess they are softer, so I think it will be a good start for me and I will, it will be easier for me, uh, hopefully. Uh, you can see the sketch, uh, I made the edges quite, um, quite hard, like, it, it, honestly it looks like uh, the bag is made out of cardboard um, and I kind of exaggerated all the folds, all all the forms just because I want to make sure that I got them right and I didn't sketch out like the smaller uh, forms here I only did the large ones so I could give myself some guidance um, but uh, we'll see what will happen with it okay uh, I'm gonna use I think turquoise will be a really nice one uh, sorry not turquoise teal I have this teal already on my palette um, from a long time ago, so I think I'm going to use this another painting. Maybe I will mute it a little bit. I'm thinking of um, uh, adding a little bit of, um, uh, I guess, red, orange red. I think this will mute it a little bit. Okay, so let's see and okay, this is nice. This is what I wanted. As I said, I wanted to stay transparent, so I'm not gonna make it um too thick and this particular teal uh, watercolor I guess all the teals really they are not as transparent as a regular watercolor is so it already resembles gouache a little bit in the uh, sense like you can see already the edges and everything softening and getting washed out I'm gonna leave the edges kind of like this. I think it gives some interest to it and I really like that there are some like uh, drops here, random. I actually, <laughs> actually want more of them. Yeah, so I'm gonna kind of drag this out a little bit to the other uh, page. I think that will look kind of interesting. Kind of will have will have this continuity going on. Okay, this looks pretty, pretty awesome. Um, I think I'm gonna. I was thinking that since. My light is coming from the top, or rather not maybe top, but like from the left side. I'm gonna darken the right side here, but I think it will be painted over anyway. 
But maybe, you know, I will do it. I will add a more, a bit more kind of orange red. Yeah. And darken this area. Kind of to, you know, add interest so it's not all one like a uh, uniform um, tone. I'm gonna do this it's also underneath uh, this table. Okay, I really like it. Here maybe. And I need some tissues and I'm gonna clean up a little bit of these puddles. Okay, um, I will let it dry a little bit and in the meantime I will try to maybe mix some colors. I already have some mix here while it's dry and uh, these are the similar colors to what I'll, I really want to use actually. So. I'm gonna mix, kind of revive the color and uh, let's see. So this will be uh, maybe not uh, purple like this, but darker and more muted, but this will be my like darkest dark. So I'm gonna add a bit of like gray. And I probably want some, some scratch paper to just, you know, to just test the color. Let's see, so this will like something like this. I actually like it, so I think I will leave that to be. Um, Okay, let's see about the, uh, the light areas. Uh, this, in my opinion, is too like bubblegum pink. I think it's too pink and maybe I need more white. That's one thing. And maybe I want to mute it a little bit. Let's see. I'm gonna try adding Mm. green to it. Maybe this like forest green will do the job, let's see. Okay, it's not too bad, but like mm, it needs more white now. It looks a bit like dusty pink now which which I'm okay with yeah I have on paper looks something like this but see this is white so it looks darker than I think it will look like on a on the background that I have going on on the actual sketch um I guess we'll see and here it will be the uh, mid tone. So I think my mid tone I want it to be darker for sure. So I'm gonna add more purple, but I want it to be a bit more red. So I'm gonna add some red.
the difference between my what I call mid tone and light is like too much difference. We need like a kind of third in between of these two, which I think is a good idea. Yeah, this is too dark. This is too too dark. So I want another puddle um, here, which is kind of <clears throat> in between of the lightest and what I called uh, mid tone. So definitely I want to some white. Yeah, I really like it. It's kind of like a plum color. I'm not sure what to call this. Anyway, I think my paper is dry enough and um a lot of people start with like dark areas and maybe I will do that too, but I'm a little bit worried to start with like dark dark. I think I will keep this for like really dark areas, maybe even for like outlining. So I think I'm gonna, I'm, I'd rather use this. I feel more confident to use this than this. Okay, so one of the darkest areas is definitely this here. See, already my sketching will disappear under under this, so I'm gonna I will try to you know keep some hint for me where everything is until I'm ready to you know completely let go of the sketch. There's a little bit of highlight here, and I will. I just want to keep it. I know I can you know put a highlight over at any time, but. I find it makes it easier for me to kind of see the whole picture. Okay, this area is a little, there is a little bit of light. So I'm going to leave it for now. And I'm working like from this, uh, from left to the right, also because the sharper edge is here on the like left side of the fall. The inner uh, form here, inner uh, this like uh, separation is not as hard. It's not a hard edge, so I don't want to force it. I know I'm being kind of precious uh, with what I'm doing right now and that's because, as I said, I want to be able to... I'm covering up the sketch, but I still want to see where is what until I guess some moment where I'm ready to let go of it. Um, ideally, the end result I want to be... I want to have like much broader strokes, but for now, I want to like uh, still see where everything goes. Okay, um, I think this is here is dark as well. And I think could do all the edges of the strands because you know they have this um uh, I know what is it but like I don't know what it's called uh you know when they um kind of rubberize the edges of the of the leather so this is what it is and it's much darker than um the rest of the leather so it will be dark there will be kind of dark outlines that are actually are on the sketch and I'm not like making them up. I mean, 
they will get darker. I will use like dark dark later, but for now I'm kind of okay with this color. Okay, now I started getting into like smaller details and <laughs> like this smaller um, shapes here and I don't want to do that yet. So I think I'm ready to move on to, to the lighter uh, tone to other areas. Okay, so let's see, with this I could, probably this is one area which is kind of a bit lighter. Here as well, since it's on the left side, um, this area is being kind of lit by the window. And there's a small sliver here between these traps. I know right now it looks kind of boring with just two mixes, um, but after I map out the forms, um, the light and shadow areas, I think it will get more interesting, so just bear with me. I feel like I need to um, also at this point kind of map out the really light areas, they're almost like highlights and I think it will make it easier for me to determine what is like a highlight area and what is like uh, I'd say light medium. So I'm going to use uh, the kind of like light dusty pink that I mixed before and I'm gonna map out the light areas that are lit um, by the window there is some white going on here now I'm okay to kind of also pay attention to smaller forms and areas. Um, I feel like now that I covered the large ones, I'm okay to go into details a little bit. And uh, for now I will keep, as you can see, my mix is not very um, opaque yet. For now, I'm okay to, you know, like things to bleed through each other. I think it adds an interest. And if it needs to be later, I will go in with um, the final layer. It could be a little bit more thick uh, for the areas. I think that needs to be like covered completely. If it makes sense. Alright, maybe it's a mistake. This is quite dark. I shouldn't, I shouldn't have used this. Um, there is this side of the bag that you can see a little bit that I didn't even, um, didn't even cover here. Okay, so I need to work 
on this area it's a bit more complex because there is a shadow from the strap that's why you know I haven't covered it yet but I will get to it this has been hit by the light this bent a little bit I think right here there is a slightly lighter area and definitely here since it's kind of being bent in a way that it's facing the window yeah. You know, I'm noticing some elements, like there's a V-shaped kind of um, line here and here that got covered by the by the color, so I need to bring that back uh, before I forgot that it's there. I think I'm good with the light tint for now. I'm gonna go back to... Maybe the darker one. I want to bring in the dark, dark mix because I feel like some area is kind of disappearing and I also really like the style where it keeps it a bit like sketch-like with uh, kind of slight outlines but with paint, if you know what I mean. So I kind of want to preserve some of the like dark, not form, but just like really lines. For example, here there is a line because of the... Um, because it was... the two edges were sewn together. So there is a line here. And I want to keep it kind of loose, so I don't want it to be like, you know... Um, a connected kind of like a harsh line and there is one here too yeah there is kind of like a tag here I guess you have to kind of to hold it down when they are like zipping because a zipper starts here in this bag so I want to preserve this little interesting detail as well I don't want to lose it there is a whole zipper and there's like brass elements that I haven't worked on yet because it will be a completely different color and they are small details so I'm gonna use a smaller brush for now I'm just ignoring it. And I'm still using my larger brush. I still haven't I still haven't switched to a smaller one. Uh, for now I feel Good using this and I also don't want to switch prematurely to the small one because then I will really start getting into like details and as I said I don't want it to be like super realistic so for now I'm sticking with this here um, as I said the edge of the straps of the leathers has like really dark outlines like a rubberized outline and I want to preserve it also because it will separate the strap from the shadow underneath. Maybe my dark mix is too dark is what I'm thinking now. Maybe I need to add 
a bit more purple to lighten it up slightly. I kind of don't like how it appears, almost black. I feel like it's too much. Okay, what do you think about this one? Yeah, I like it better than this. That was it was how it was before. I feel like it was too dark. This definitely here is uh, dark dark because the leather has some thickness to it, so there is a cast shadow on this side. Oh, that was too much, too wide. And there's cast shadow here. Uh, on the other side though, there is a um, stitching on the edges, so there is still some kind of outline. But I will leave it for later. Okay, so what's next? So this area is darker than I painted it before, for sure. Because it's completely um, on the side where there is no light. I mean... Uh, there is a cast shadow from that table, so this way this area and a little bit of here is still light. Oh, sorry, uh, not, not cast shadow, there is a reflected light from the table, that's what I meant. While I'm still working with the large brush, I think I want to cover up the table underneath as well. And I will keep it simpler than the bag because it's not a focal point. So I will use probably like three uh, shades overall. Do you think this is a good base color? Like, it doesn't have to be exactly the color that's on the reference. Because on the reference, I find the color of the table is very vibrant. Yeah, and I don't like it. It's still quite vibrant, by the way. Um, maybe I will tone down in some places.
I mean, at the base of the bag, I will need to make it even darker because obviously it will be much darker. But like for here, for the outer edges of the cast shadow, I think it, it's good. I might struggle a little bit later because there is an, a brass element here that will, I think, uh, will clash with the color of the table. But the tiny elements like that are not that important. Um, not all of them have to be readable, I think. And again, here, I kind of want it to be softer. So then there is the edge of the table. She's kind of uh, I'm kind of um, in the shadow, especially this edge. And I will darken it up even more. I will use this as a base. I will might need to repeat this because gouache, as you know, uh, dries dark as opposed to watercolor, which dries light. Uh, I've done a lot of watercoloring, so gouache always catches me off guard. I, think I feel like, oh, this is pretty good, and I'm done with this area, and then it dries, and it looks kind of bleak. Now let me go back to my darker mix and I feel like I need to darken it more. I feel like it's not being dark enough. I have neutral black on my palette, and although they say don't use black, I use it when I struggle to darken some mixes. I use just a little bit of it, uh, otherwise it gets really muddy, but I'm okay using it. I don't care if I'm being judged for it. And as I said, right underneath the back, uh, it needs to be darker.
Okay, I'm kind of ready to leave the table alone because uh, it's kind of frustrating me right now. So I will move on to the other stuff and I think I'm ready to switch to a smaller brush too. Okay, now let's do this um, metal elements here, 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 and kind of, uh, I want to kind of like, a, there's a zipper going all the way to here, and maybe I want to kind of hint, I don't want to, you know, zipper is a very detailed thing, I don't want to like um, um, outline every teeth of the zipper, but I want to give a hint that there is a zipper here. Keep forgetting to kind of fill in the small area here. Every time I look at it and I have like a wrong uh, color loaded on my brush. As I said, I think now I'm free to work on the smaller shapes and try to like add variety to my strokes to make it more interesting. So now is the fun part, but uh, I need to remember to not overwork it because it be sometimes it gets too fun, too much fun, and then um, I end up doing more damage than good. Maybe I want to add more variety. Like it doesn't have to be. Like, I want to shift the hue a little bit. Uh, some areas I want to maybe be a bit cooler because everything right now reads quite warm. Kind of like this. Cooler and darker. And around the opening of the bag, I need to darken it because it's actually dark in the reference, but also I need to give a background for the zipper because I need to add some hints of the zipper being there. And since the zipper is metal, uh, the highlights I will put in will really pop. If I add some dark before doing it. As I said again, continuation is important. Like as I said, this small piece of the strap, again, when I'm working on this um, opening of the bag and it goes behind the strap. It's important that it's lined up correctly. You know, it, especially when you're keeping it loose, you think maybe, oh, it's not important, but it ad adds to the readability of the piece. Kind of, I know I, at some point I kind of lightened my darkest dark, but now I kind of want it to be darker again, at least for some of the elements, like here, I want it to be dark like this.
So this is the next day and I kind of want to fix some of the uh, some of the areas that I'm not happy with and um, I think I'm gonna use my smaller brush for this. So what I don't like the most is this uh, kind of fold. Um, I feel like, uh, and I'm gonna put a reference here so you can see, um, in the reference uh, it's not, the fold is not as harsh because it's leather, it's a thick, um, uh, it's a thick material and it's not going to be as um, such a hard edge as I've uh, made it here. So I will try to fix it. Um, I sadly already um, cleaned my palette. It would have been nice if I already had the colors that I used before, so I will have to mix them again. Let me try. Um, so here. And I need slightly darker again because I wanted to transition nicely without having this um, sharp edge because in the whole thing there are not, it doesn't really have any sharp edges because uh, due to the nature of the uh, material. So I'm gonna add a little bit of, I'm yeah, thinking maybe this. I did not mix it well because I can see the streaks of green. That's not what I intended to do. And there needs to be some kind of transition on this side as well because, as I said, there are no sharp edges anywhere. And like here on the outer edges, I feel like I kind of lost. I kind of lost the. It's not like a high line, but it's definitely a lighter area. And here as well, I feel like the transition is too harsh. I feel like transition should be more subtle. Okay, I'm gonna let it dry a little bit because it's hard to see right now. And in the meantime, another thing that I wanted to fix is the zipper. Uh, it doesn't look like zipper at all. It looks like some kind of gemstones or something. And uh, I really don't like using very small brushes, but I think here I have to. So I'm gonna try to find a small flat brush, something like this. Uh, since the zipper teeth are have a rectangular shape, so maybe this will be helpful. Let's see. In the meantime, I can come back to this. So I want to kind of enforce. Hmm. Let me see. Yeah, I kind of want to enforce the darkest dark in this area because I kind of lost it a little bit. I have 
with some nice interesting shape. I'm going to let, uh, let it dry and in the meantime I will go back to using my small brush and try to make something with those with a zipper. I find it really difficult because it's such a tiny detail and I don't know how to make it read like a zipper without you know uh, making out all the details. Yeah, I think that's good enough. And now let's come back here. I kind of lost some of my values here. So, yeah, I will need to bring them back. Okay, it's not dry yet, so I kind of messed it up, but it's fine. I will leave it alone for now, because I don't want it to get messed up. Like, Gouache uh, really likes when layers are dry. Uh, when you have like more crisp brush strokes. This here I'm also not liking because it looks very plain. It's like the same color all over except for this kind of attempt at a, not highlight, but like a reflected light from the table. So I want to bring a bit more variety here, but not much because otherwise it will clash with this side, which is, you know, has uh, a range uh, of tones. But I just wanted a little bit of variety there, so I will try to make something dark, but not as same um, tone. Here I will try to, oops, that's not what I need. I just want to slightly 
define the shape. Like as I said, I don't want it to be like a rough shape, but I still think it needs a little bit of definition. There was kind of a small shape here that got lost. And there is a small indentation here. And it's not as dark, but like, since it's facing the light, but it's still an indentation and I want to bring it back. And this here is too dark. So. And then elongate like this. And this here is kind of bothering me too. It looks just weird. It's too dark, but it doesn't quite reflect it in any shade. It's just a dark splotch. nice before why do I touch it? Okay, I think that's it. I think I'm gonna leave it at this because I think it looks better than before. The form here reads better than it did before. This is all for today.